ladies and gentlemen, Cadets Theater Classics proudly presents Lies in the Wind, which is it's by Matt Carasino and directed by Excuse me, Bethany Arneson. <gasps> Well, good evening, and welcome to Condensed Theater Classics. I'm your hostess, Amanda. Tonight, we are proud to offer our adaptation of Peter Matthews' epic, romantic, well, epic, Lives in the Wind. Join us as we present the lives, loves, and struggles of several generations of the Cornwalls, an American family not unlike your own, as they face the uncertainty of a future colored by the Civil Wars, World Wars I and II, the Korean conflict, Vietnam, Granada, Operation Desert Storm, and the War on Drugs. And while we only have 15 minutes, we promise not to leave out a single slice of drama, passion, and symbolism. And now, Lives in the Wind. <laughs> Enter Jacob Cornwall, a poor man, a strong man, a good man. He is out hunting when he spies Rebecca Goodley, a second generation immigrant, having lunch alone in a field of green, a field yet untouched by the bullets and carnage of the Civil War, which is still a couple weeks away. Good day, ma'am. Oh, good day to you, sir. I See, you're brandishing a weapon. Yes, this rifle is my lifeblood, for I used to kill animals and feed my children. Oh, then you would never use it to kill a person? Oh, no, ma'am. That would tarnish it, quite possibly haunt me to my dying day. I can't help but notice that you're very pretty. May, may I ask your name? I'm Rebecca. Rebecca Goodley, second generation immigrant. Oh, immigrant from where? Uh, I'm not sure, really. I don't think it matters. But you said you have children. You must then have a wife. Alas, I did have a wife, but she died while giving birth to our second child. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, it is sad, but essentially she gave her life so that another may live, which may end up being a theme. <laughs> <laughs> ah, will you join me for lunch? Actually, I thought I'd ask you to marry me. Oh, my. <laughs> but... Before, before they could marry, Rebecca had to seek permission from her mother, the stern widow Goodley. You cannot marry this man. I forbid it. But mother, please. I will die if you don't allow this marriage. No marriage. I need you to take care of me in my final bitter years. <laughs> but mother, don't you remember what it was like? To be in love? Uh, I was never in love with your father. It was an arranged marriage. <laughs> oh. But surely there was someone who you loved very much, but you just couldn't be with because their family was disgraced or they were too poor or something. Oh, oh yes. My darling Pierre, we can never speak, for his family was a family of traveling gypsy servants or something. But we would look into each other's eyes and know that we belonged to them. Pierre, darling, darling Pierre, you were the only man who could make me understand what true love is. Oh, Pierre. Mother, surely you want me to experience the love that you were denied. Uh, yes, my child. Oh, how could I have been so cruel? Yes, you may marry Pierre. <laughs> Jacob. Oh, yes, Jacob, you are being married now. <laughs> and mother, yeah? Where exactly are you from? No. Oh, you know, the old country. <laughs> So, Rebecca and Jacob were married. I now pronounce you man and wife. Oh, oh 
Jacob, I am so happy. I am happy too, Rebecca. But now I must go fight in the Civil War. <laughs> the Civil War? Yes, we're fighting over slavery and states' rights, and there's some economic factors too. I don't want to get in the hole. <laughs> Which side are you fighting for? The North, I think, you know, the good side. <laughs> Fight bravely, dear husband. I'll be waiting for you. And don't go get in your sail for shot. <laughs> Where is she from, anyway? You know, the old country. Canada? <laughs> so Jacob was off to fight in the Civil War. Rebecca stayed home and tended to the crops. She was a good wife and farmer and mother to her husband's children. And while I'm probably sure there's some fine domestic drama going on, we're instead going to join Jacob as he fights in the Civil War. Fine, fine. Well, this is quite a war, my new best friend Cornelius. Yes, it is good to be fighting side by side, my newest friend. Gets the evil and tyranny of the, uh, the South? I think so. Yes, the South, the, uh, the damn dead south! Oh, damned evil south! <laughs> Look, Jacob, I think we should about to take care of each other's families if something were to happen to us. Good idea. So bad. <laughs> this damn evil war. It's almost as if the Civil War is pitting brother against brother. Yeah. Ah! Look out! Ah! Oh! <laughs> Jacob! Jacob, are you there? Everything's getting dark. You were shot by a soldier from the damned evil south, my new best friend, Cornelius. <laughs> where, is the, where is the man who shot me? I shot him in anger with my rifle. Oh, Jacob, you shouldn't have done that. That's the kind of thing that can come back to haunt a man. Don't be silly! <laughs> How so? Jacob, Jacob, remember our vow. Oh, poor, poor Cornelius! What do you think he meant by... Oh, no. My long-lost brother William! I have shot my own brother! Meanwhile, back at home. Oh, no! These crops were doing so well, but they've suddenly all gone bad. So the war ended and Jacob returned home a broken man. Jacob, you're home! Yes, and I'm a broken man. <laughs> I saw how the selfish wiles of a few politicians brought out man's inhumanity. I myself killed my own flesh and blood. And to what end? Yes, our side won, but there can be no winner in a war where brother is pitted against brother. Oh, Jacob. So um, what happened to the crops? What? The crops. I can see they're not doing so well. Well, right. It was a bitter harvest, Jacob. I toiled and toiled, but they just suddenly went bad. Did you use fertilizer? <laughs> yes. Because you have to fertilize the whole area. <laughs> I know. It just seems strange is all. It's symbolic. <laughs> right. Good one. Hey, did I mention we have to take care of my best friend's family now? Despite the bitter lessons of the Civil War, the Cornwall thrived. Rebecca bore a child who, in turn, bore two children, including a daughter named Hortense, who looked just like Rebecca. Hortense fell in love with a strapping young man named Harry, who looked nothing like Jacob. <laughs> yes! And so, Harry told his wife that he was off to fight in World War I. My wife? I'm off to the war. <gasps> The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, and I must prevent Adolf Hitler from taking over the world. And so Harry told his wife that he was off to fight in World War One. Oh! Uh, my wife, I'm off to the war! The... Um... Germans and Australians. The Germans and Australians have <laughs> taken... Austrians! The Austrians, they seem so nice. <laughs> Harry was informed that 
unfortunately killed in World War I. His son George, who I suppose bore a slight resemblance to Jacob. <laughs> Grew to be a young man of, well, Jacob's age, I guess, and fell in pursuit of the lovely Wendy. Dude. <laughs> Anyways, George took a job as a Depression era Dust Bowl nomadic Steinbeck type and fell out in pursuit of the lovely Wendy. Hey. Hello. So. Yes. This Depression, huh? <laughs> I know. It sure is. Depressing. <laughs> sure is. You said it. Mm-hmm. TikTok, guys. Um, I love you. Marry me. <laughs> oh, yes, we will have many kids. Well, let's get a cracking. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Soon they had a son. <laughs> of these two idiots and their kid was suddenly interrupted by the madness and mayhem of a date that will live in infamy. Did you hear something? Sounds like the Japanese just attacked Pearl Harbor! <laughs> nah, can't be. <laughs> Heaven, to Bessie, you're right! And so George was off to fight in World War II. My family, I am off to the war. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, and I must prevent Adolf Hitler from taking over the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow! And off he went. <laughs> he joined the platoon and became best friends with a young black man named Charles. <laughs> A young black man named Charles. Present. <laughs> really? Yeah. Only it's pronounced Cornelius. <laughs> right, right. So George and young black Cornelius stormed the beach at Normandy. Well, this is quite a war, my new black best friend Cornelius. <laughs> Yes, it is good to be fighting side by side, my new best friend. Gets the evil and tyranny of the Germans. You said it. Yes, the Germans, the damn, damn Germans. Oh, damned evil Germans. <laughs> Not too thrilled about the Japanese and Italian either. Oh, bastards all. <laughs> Listen, Jacob. George. <laughs> George. 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 <laughs> yeah. Seeing as how this is a particularly bloody battle, I think we should be able to take care of each other's families if something were to happen to us. See, my great-grandfather did something like that, and it didn't work out for him in the end, so... Grenade! <laughs> oh, great. Take care of my family! Tell them how I died and heal so you might live! Really, Cornelius, you don't have Kaboom! to do this. <laughs> kaboom? <laughs> yes, kaboom. It's a low budget, okay? Scram. Go. Oh. Oh no! My new black best friend, Cornelius! Who would have ever thought that you might die so that I might live? Whoever indeed! I am so berserk! I'm going to go distraught! And go distraught he did! Shooting and pummeling every German, Japanese, and Italian soldier he could find until he single handedly took the beach at Normandy. And as he stood there, exhausted, overwhelmed by the bloody carnage around them, he noticed the body of a German on his right. Oh no, my long lost brother Hans! I have shot my own brother! <laughs> Meanwhile, back at home. Oh no, the chicken I bought for dinner has suddenly gone bad! So, about 25 years passed. But Wendy, having lost her looks, was sent to a nursing home. George never recovered from shooting his long-lost brother, and he too was sent to a nursing home. His 
George, son George Jr. is now a straight-laced young lawyer who looks just like his father. Stop it! As tensions rise throughout the country of the conflict in Vietnam, George meets Meadow, a flower child. Oh, mm -mm. ladies, ladies, please. <laughs> so you're a hippie, huh? Isn't that un-American? Oh no, man! This is a land of freedom, not oppression. This is a land of self-expression and free love, not violence and hate. <laughs> I love you. I love you too, man. Why, <laughs> hello. Hey, 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 Meadow. Let's smoke some pot and go to Hate Ashby to watch the Grateful Dead and have some free love. <laughs> no, hippie guy. I'm gonna stay here and marry George. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm supposed to settle down and have a family. Well, not me. Hey, Easy Rider, get your fines <laughs> over here. <laughs> oh my, I want to ride your peace train, sunshine. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> Gum? No. And so our hero was off to fight. I don't think so. Huh? I think we're done. What? We're done. Show's over. But we still have like three wars to go. Trust me, we're done. When a play starts indulging in postmodern ironic commentary on itself, it's time to stop. Hello, this is not into the woods. Well, you may well, you may stop, but I want to forge on and see what fate has in store and for the And so, corn the Cornwalls and their kin realized that they were capable of making their own decisions and didn't have to be forced into hackneyed roles and half-baked war scenes. The widow Goodley finally tracked down Pierre, who had become a wealthy croissant tycoon in Paris. <laughs> they married, he died two days later, and she retired a rich woman. Cornelius didn't die after all. Instead, after years of therapy, he started a support group for best friends with martyr complexes. <laughs> the lovely Wendy became a raging feminist before meeting a chiseled, long-haired construction worker who tamed her fiery independence, Fabio style. <laughs> Jacob, also met a chiseled, long-haired construction worker and moved with him to Napa Valley, where they bought a vineyard together. Hippie Guy and Amanda moved to South Florida. They put out several folk albums before starting a swingers club. And me? Well, I sing. I have six years of tap and dance. I can do English and Irish dialects, and I'm willing to do nudity, but only if it's essential to the story. My headshot's in the lobby. So, from all of us, give your parents a hug. End world hunger, America rules, and good night, everybody!